Hello my friends, welcome to the All Movies series. In this video, I will try to focus on another Hollywood star, Al Pacino and his career. We start with his film debut. Do you put out? You mean at least? What do you mean? Do you put out a don't you? No. I don't know what I'm doing talking to you. Somebody like you ought to be asking me. Listen, you don't have to worry about money either. I got plenty of that. Yeah. I got nothing, man. Hey, yeah, we'll take a little trip. You want to take a trip? Al's first leading role. His performance in this film made Francis Ford Coppola choose him for the role of Michael Corleone in The Godfather. I thought we, I didn't know where it was. I had a whole stash! You could have told Chico! I tell you! You could have told Chico or Hank you were playing a big businessman! I don't want to give me another piece! I don't have any money! Oh, uh, that, when my brother Sonny was a kid, he found Tom Hagen in the street, and he had no home. And so my father took him in. And he's been with us ever since. According to Pacino, the tears in Marlon Brando's eyes were real, in the hospital scene, when Michael pledges himself to his father. He boycotted the Academy Awards ceremony, angry that he was nominated for the best actor in a supporting role, noting that his character had more screen time than his co-star, best actor winner Marlon Brando. And I love you. But don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. Frank, what the hell's up? I'm out here now, it's five hours. Before shooting, Gene Hackman and Pacino both dressed as hobos and hitchhiked through California to get into their characters. According to Al, this was the greatest script he'd ever read, and he and Gene Hackman did not get along very well during filming due to their different personalities. Jesus Christ. I didn't touch upstairs. You take off on me. Pacino considers this movie to be one of his greatest achievements as an actor. Before filming, he spent a great deal of time with the real Frank Serpico to perfect his performance. It was shot in reverse order. He began with long hair and a beard, then for each scene, his hair and beard were trimmed bit by bit until he became clean cut. Dealing with police corruption like this commission is essential. Now, I have business that's important with Hyman Roth. I don't want it disturbed. Was it a boy? Al made just $35,000 for starring in The Godfather. However, having made Runaway hit Scarecrow and Serpico, he managed to command a $600,000 salary for the part two, as well as a 10% cut of the movie's adjusted gross income. Clear my name with the same publicity with which they now have besmirched it. During production, Al reportedly only slept a couple hours a night, ate sparingly, and would sometimes take cold showers. This was in order to emphasize Sonny's disheveled, exhausted and yet wired appearance. I just needed the injection. What's the matter with you? Trying to be a hero or what? You don't look good. Look. Let's go. We'll let you out. I'm not trying to be anything. I just want to be left alone. first completely romantic screen role that had been offered to Al. He didn't know how to drive a car prior to this film. He had to take driving lessons before he was able to drive in the race car scenes. You don't think about danger. You're trying to keep your distance. And you're playing with me. Trying to confuse me. Who told you that? Who told you that she was dying? Uh, I guess I should, uh, request a recess so that my client could get something to eat. During filming, Al frequently ad-libbed and improvised. He liked to do this because he was slow learning lines as well as to be spontaneous. This, however, can interfere with another actor's performance. And we want to win regardless of justice, regardless of who's guilty or innocent. Winning is everything. Have you ever had your cock sucked by a man? A man? <laughs> no. Uh, well, ever been forked? Or had a man smoke your pole? <laughs> you gotta be kidding. 
The lead cop character was a naive 20-something in the book, Owl was 39, when he made the film. The ongoing protests from the gay community about the making of the film caused him to become extremely uncomfortable with his role during filming. Wait, only, uh, only, only I'm not 43. You're 43. I'm 42, Gloria. You were 42, lad. Pacino made his New York stage debut in 1968 in The Indian Wants the Bronx, which was a play by this film's writer Israel Horowitz. Both won Obie Awards for it and had remained friends over the years and took the opportunity here to make a movie together. Get out of my way. Hi there. I'm Larry Kotswinkel. I'm uh, look, pal, I have not hit anybody in 30 years, but I'll tell you, I am capable of doing tremendous damage just now. I'm not going to get a sky like that eating pussy. This was when I was a kid. Although Tony Montana is supposed to be Cuban, making his first language Spanish, he only speaks one line of Spanish during the entire movie. He reportedly stated that Tony Montana was one of his favorites of all the characters he's played. Right here. You just cross his name off with that quill there, see? Then it never happened. Come on. Detain that man! Oh, it there. This movie's dismal box office showing and critical drubbing kept Al Pacino off the screen until Sea of Love, 1989. Credited theatrical movie debut as an actress of Annie Lennox. She has since admitted she found the experience very unpleasant and was put off appearing in more movies in the future. It's all clear, Pa. They're all down. I say this guy's dead 48 hours. No, no. Look at the lividity. It's more like 36. This movie is often credited as the film that pulled Al Pacino out of a slump of failures he'd starred in throughout the 1980s. In the final scene, when Frank and Helen are walking down the street, some of the passers-by glance at Pacino, recognizing him. Of course it does. Ray, that's how to catch out those eggs in the ring. There are several different versions of the film since Pacino has continued to re-edit the film over the years. It was filmed in nine days, and he donated a copy to the Museum of Modern Art with the stipulation that it can only be shown with his permission. A small number of screenings have taken place since 1990. Kick him again, we see what follows. Art! Put the word out! Lips territory is my territory now. Everyone who worked for him is working for me. Al Pacino has stated that Madonna flashed him during rehearsals for this movie, opening her coat to reveal that she was naked underneath. Pacino joked that when he is old, if he is observed with a beatific smile on his face, it will be because he is recalling the incident. This is your fault. They're forcing me to use you as a hostage. Break out the gun! If you have a law degree, you're taking out insurance. After that, you can do anything you want. You can work for me. I will never work for you. Pacino stated that he did not agree with the portrayal of Michael in the film. He didn't believe that Michael would ever feel regret or remorse for his actions, especially the murder of his brother. The only film in the trilogy not to secure him an Oscar or BAFTA nomination. Not what I wanted! You won't be able to go back. You'll be like me. Michelle Pfeiffer took on the role of the emotionally fragile waitress, in part to work with Al again after having filmed Scarface with him nearly a decade before. The casting of her was met with some negativity as many felt the actress was too beautiful to play such a damaged and plain character. However, Pfeiffer's performance was widely praised, and the actress was nominated for a Golden Globe as a result. I'm not so sure I like where your key's been. If you think there is, go ahead, be that thing. Bad people go to hell? I don't think so. You think that? During filming, members of the cast who weren't required to be on the set certain days would show up anyway to watch the other actors' performances. The actors referred to this film as death of a fucking salesman. 
The single largest cost on the movie was for the rain effects throughout the first half of the film. World of clock watches, bureaucrats, office holders, what it is. It's a fucked up world. I know exactly where your body is. What I'm looking for is some indication of a brain. Al Pacino was helped by a school for the blind in his preparation for this role. He said that he made himself appear blind by not allowing his eyes to focus on anything. He would often remain in character offset, using his cane to walk with and never looking at anyone when they talked to him. In addition to winning the Best Actor Oscar, he was nominated for Supporting Actor for Glengarry Glenn Ross the same year. Get on with your life, would you? What life? I got no life! I'm in the dark here! I know you heard this rap before, Your Honor. I mean it. This is the truth. I changed. I changed. And it didn't take no 30 years. Al originally wanted to grow a ponytail to play Carlito, but when he visited East Harlem, he saw that none of the men wore their hair that way. He had difficulty with his scenes with Jorge Porcel, who played Seso, the club owner. The actor, who was primarily a television comedian, spoke no English and learned his lines phonetically. Yeah, I think today you're finally gonna get it. You've been thinking today for the last two weeks. Hey, I come close Sunday night. Huh? Yeah, all I know is if I die, five minutes. Pacino appeared in the film as a personal favor to director James Foley because he had a great time working with him on Glengarry Glen Ross. Al and Mary Elizabeth had previously worked together in Scarface as brother and sister. Grandpa, I looked at everything on your mantle. And stole what? Because they had no time because they were on a clock, which means they knew our response time to a 211, had our air, immobilized it, entered, escaped in under three minutes. The first film to feature Robert De Niro and Pacino acting together, which created much hype prior to release. They both starred in The Godfather 2, but never shared the screen together, as the split chronology prevented this. In an early draft of the script, Vincent Hanna had a cocaine habit, which, according to Pacino, explains his bombastic outbursts. What was our budget as of midnight? 31.7 billion. It cost a lot of money to have our children slaughtered in the streets. That boy was as pure and as innocent. To help prepare for his role, Al Pacino spent time with then New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani and former mayors Ed Koch and David Dinkins. The interior scenes of New York City Hall actually were filmed inside a mansion in Teaneck, New Jersey. Perception. Talking menschkeit. My children, my mother can hold her head up in any neighborhood in the city where she walks down the block. See? In all the five boroughs, I'm known. Pacino was originally going to play Brasco. When he switched to Lefty, he recommended Johnny Depp. He loved being able to use all of the rich mafia slang throughout the film. He also picked his sunglasses out himself. I'm your best friend. Come on, let's go do this thing. Well, what's that like? One day you're putting them away, next day you're setting them free. Takes a little getting used to. Pays better, though, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Hey, Tarzan, we're billing you out at 400 an hour, my friend. Originally, the film was a more visual effects-oriented, blockbuster-type movie and was turned down by Al Pacino five times. But when Taylor Hackford went through a few script rewrites, he offered it to him again. He liked it but didn't think he could portray Milton properly and suggested Sir Sean Connery or Robert Redford instead. He's an absentee landlord! Worship that never! My kid, I did not give you up to anyone. What business do we have? To straighten something out. Mike Moore, the attorney right general here, of right Mississippi, played himself for the scenes involving the lawsuit. After filming a scene shot at the school, Russell Crowe pranked young castmates by screaming and ripping out his hair. The realistic gray wig had many fooled and horrified until the crew and crow erupted in laughter. I helped them to say yes, that's all. You're not a robot, Jeff. Right? You got a mind of your own, don't you? All week long. We work on the calls. 
over, over, over again. You are not fucking focused! Al Pacino particularly relished his role as he found it a refreshing change from the usual cops and gangsters he often plays. His final rallying speech for the team before the playoff game is based on a rallying speech real-life NFL coach Marty Schottenheimer gave the Cleveland Browns during the 1989 AFC Championship game. When they look in your eyes, they gotta believe. I know. Since May 28th? You think that's right? You know someone like me that kind of money? Who hasn't got a dime? Who's scrounging, even scraping his teeth together on the phone because you owe him that dough. You think that's decent? Al Pacino starred in the 1992 Broadway stage production of Chinese Coffee. Filmed in the summer of 1997, despite being released and copyrighted in 2000. Thomas Wolf would walk back and forth on this very bridge, night after the finally one night, a ton of words just gushed out of him. It's all about small stuff. You know, small lies, small mistakes. People give themselves away, same in misdemeanors. This is the only film to feature Robin Williams and Al. Williams speaks his first line 47 minutes into the movie, and he doesn't appear on screen until 58 minutes in. His character, Walter Finch, does appear earlier, but is not identifiable, and is possibly played by a stand-in. took you 10 minutes to beat Kate Connell to death. Ten fucking minutes. You calling that an accident? I don't deserve you. This film doesn't deserve you. It deserves much, much better than you. Creative differences? The difference is you're not creative. As part of the pre-release publicity for this film, it was claimed that Simone would be played by a completely photorealistic computer-generated actress. Director Andrew Nichol would later wed his leading lady Rachel Roberts. You can't, for God's sake, Bernard. Victor! Bernard, listen, uh, Victor. listen to me. Bernard, I didn't kill anyone. Victor, come on, it's in the paper. There's no one to kill. <laughs> As one of the subplots was fairly critical about the mayor of New York, this film sat on the shelves for two years following the terrorist attacks on the USA of 11 September 2001, a time when the city's mayor Gugliani redeemed himself in many people's eyes. Our cause is just. Our enemies everywhere. Colin Farrell They're states that, us. while filming the scene in which he Want and Al Pacino's characters go to a restaurant, Al Pacino Stop. accidentally damaged the car they were Care riding about. in. The resulting damage can be clearly Don't seen in the scene, where Clayton and Burke pull up to the restaurant. Three million, that's cash. This is America. Are you gonna show me that computer? Don't make me kill you, son. It can't be. So I think we can say, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that... Received such bad reviews that it was dropped by every UK cinema after only one week. According to longtime best friend Matt Damon, Ben Affleck twitches whenever this film is mentioned. The negative experience making this film caused Martin Brest to retire from directing. You don't fuck around! It now appears you need my help. You come to me and you say Shylock. Dustin Hoffman was interested in playing Shylock. However, when he contacted director Michael Radford about it, Al Pacino had already been cast. In fact, in 1989, Hoffman had starred as Shylock in both the London and subsequent Broadway productions of Merchant directed by Sir Peter Hall. The wool men kill the things they do not love. Oh, Hates any man the thing he would not kill. The Marlboro man here. Nice to meet you. Hey, you're in great shape. I've been in better. Oh, you're modest, too. Oh, modesty, not a virtue. Could be a vice. Sit down. This movie is based on the true story of Brandon Lang. The real Lang is in a scene greeting Matthew McConaughey. Matthew actually did play college football. And this is his first movie depicting a football college player. The dice are dancing on the table. Between now and the time they stop. It's the greatest high in the world. 
personal vendetta. I have a personal vendetta against Ted Bundy and Gacy. The film runs in real time meaning that at the moment Jack Graham is first told he has only 88 minutes to live, the remaining running time of the motion picture until the identity of the person who set Graham up is exactly 88 minutes. According to a local source, Al Pacino went to some of the apartment floors to surprise and greet as many tenants as he can during filming around the area. I saw you. You came to my class. I remember you. If you come at me, you better know. I move quick, and when I do, I slice like a goddamn hammer. We haven't even opened yet. Al Pacino was director Steven Soderbergh's first choice for the role of Willie Bank. The film's producer, Jerry Weintraub, a friend of Pacino's, persuaded him to join the cast. Soderbergh filmed all of his scenes in three weeks. I know people highly invested in my survival, and they are people who really know how to hurt. You really gonna do this thing? Do what? You gonna take down Randall? Robert De Niro and Al Pacino have said in interviews that they did not feel proud of the final result. They even stated feeling unworthy of their fans' appreciation during the premiere, with Pacino going as far as saying that it is a movie they are both trying to forget. Therefore, both actors agreed that the next project they collaborated in together would be one to be proud of. You'll fall into a deep coma as the lethal dose. During initial production, this was developed as a feature film before it became a television film. It was nominated for 15 Primetime Emmy Awards and won two, Outstanding Lead Actor for Al and Outstanding Writing for Adam Mazur. P Pacino also won the Golden Globe Award and Screen Actors Guild Award for his performance. Real trials are no, we can't, because there's no law here. Am I wrong? You're wrong! Prove it. Do you see a murderer? If you do, then you, you must convict. How about we go outside? Nice day today. You, know, just you and me, sit somewhere. Just talk a little bit. That all right? Robert De Niro was cast as Detective Stanford, but was replaced by Pacino. Lauren Bridges, the journalist played by Juliette Binoche, was originally written as a male character, Larry Bridges. Binoche took the role on condition that none of the male dialogue was changed. John, we're so close here. Hey, you got us in the game. What's the... Uh... Al Pacino, appearing as a fictionalized version of himself, is shown playing Richard III on stage. In reality, Pacino directed and starred in a documentary about the making of a production of Looking for Richard. When he is speaking in French or Spanish, it is just gibberish, as the native speakers attest. I forgot, that's right. He's got a whole novel in him about Desinex foot powder. We were, we were at some... Oh, Oscar, finally! Finally! You knew I was in town, so you went... Al Pacino previously starred as King Herod in Oscar Wilde's Salome on Broadway in 1992 opposite Cheryl Lee and in 2003 opposite Marissa Tomei. He reprised the role in 2006 in Los Angeles opposite Jessica Chastain. It will avail thee nothing. I will not go within till she hath danced. Dance, Salome. So I kind of missed you. Missed you too. I got parole today. We're driving in a stolen car, and I imagine you're carrying a weapon. The only yeah. piece of modern technology in the film is the new car that Pacino, Walken, and Arkin drive throughout the film, Dodge Challenger SRT8. If you notice, every other technology used is very old. Is there a family plot or something? We thought we should bury him. You think I shot the girl, Linda? You're smart. High praise indeed. You think I shot the girl? Your chauffeur is on record. My boss came out. I think I just killed somebody. Dr. King fought for equality. 
This movie revolved around the murder of Lana Clarkson. Clarkson appeared in Scarface, 1983, with Al Pacino, who played Phil Spector in this movie. You were paid to uh, perform, and your performance was perfect. So, uh, can I do as well as you? Tomorrow, we'll see. Where is the princess? Why did she not return? Pacino more than workshop this film production when, in April 30 till June 12, 2003 Oscar Wilde's Salome was staged as a reading at the Ethel Barrymore Theatre. Pacino was owned by Marissa Tomei, David Strathairn and Diane Wyest. I have a crystal into which it is not lawful for a woman to look, nor may young men behold it till they have been beaten with rods. I lost my talent for no good reason and now just as arbitrarily i'm losing the desire to it was pacino's idea to make the book into a movie to the point of convincing barry levinson to direct it and approaching together buck henry to adapt it although they have both denied that the character of simon is autobiographical to pacino's life he noted that he related to the material stating that it's in as they said his wheelhouse what was I? oh you're leaving oh that's great yeah that's great it's my opening night. These people of my life stand in the air. They're waiting for something from me. They're waiting for a miracle. You ever think about retiring? Retiring? Oh, that'd be terrible. <laughs> in the original script, Manglehorn was a criminal who had gone straight. He met with his old partner who was hiding out in a senior citizen's home, and his mysterious backstory was explained you are in a dark room suffering with the pain guess what there's still no one hey, baby dog, what's going on? inspired by the story of singer steve tilston who learned of the existence of a letter that john lennon had written to him 34 years after the letter was written the pictures on the wall of Collins' house, around 10 minutes in, are all pics from previous Pacino roles, The Godfather, Serpico, etc. They hate my guts, but uh, I'm told that's what families do. Yeah, that's right. I've taught you well. Yeah. I'm going to play my new songs. Wow, you thought this through? Well, you're going to go after Denning for fraud publicly. A man worth about. The first collaboration between Al Pacino and Sir Anthony Hopkins, it made just £97 sterling, about $125, in its UK opening weekend, with an average of four viewers per screen. It has come to this. You do the wrong thing for the right reasons. Journalism isn't taught, it's innate. You know what I'm saying? You think the shrapnel in my back? Barkat Abdi, who was born in Somalia, had his breakout role in Captain Phillips. Barkat Abdi plays one of the main pirates in that movie that is describing an incident that is part of the story. Almost all of the actors in the Somalia scenes are actual Somalian refugees. Second thought, don't tell me. Booze is too good to leave. Okay, honey, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it. Still prefer retirement, Archer? I never prefer the time. The entire film was shot in Atlanta, Georgia. It is the ninth time Al Pacino has played the role of a police detective. I remember those little eyes looking at me as if I was the one who killed your father. But I didn't. I didn't do it. He hung himself. I was there. Why do you say that? About Gary and Tim? Because it's true. Grand jury doesn't think so. You think that's right? Well, what do I know? This is the second time Al Pacino has played a head football coach, the first being in any given Sunday. He and Barry Levinson also worked together on You Don't Know Jack and The Humbling. Oh, put me out of it, but I had a job to do. I was working. I wasn't focused on it. All the shooting. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino claimed to have written the role of fictitious Hollywood agent Marvin Schwartz specifically for Al Pacino, 
and he considers himself one of the luckiest directors in the history of Hollywood for being able to cast DiCaprio and Pitt at the same time. They got along so well during the production that they confirmed at the film's con premiere that they would love to team up again on another film. And because of me, he's considering you. Mm. Offhand, that particular amount of money I borrowed, I, I don't know. Al Pacino said that, to him, the process of filming The Irishman was how it felt filming movies in the 1970s. This is the first time he worked with either Martin Scorsese or Joe Pesci on a film. Before accepting the role, Joe Pesci refused multiple times to come out of retirement in order to appear in this film. And that's all my friends, hope you enjoyed it, thank you for watching, and remember, when in doubt, fuck. McGee's in Detroit. Yeah, he's here. He decided to come.